Well, it's good to be here. I've got 10 minutes to tell you a story that I usually take about an hour on, but so I'm going to do this real fast. We just recently changed our name from Western Uranium to Western Uranium and Vanadium. We probably should have put Uranium before Vanadium. As you follow the commodity markets, Vanadium has been the hottest metal out there this last year. Three years ago, Vanadium was $3 a pound. Today, it's over $30 a pound. I've been in the uranium vanadium industry for a long time. I've never seen vanadium worth more than a pound of, of uranium, but that seems to be the case. Uh, I went to a ferro alloy conference last week in Orlando, Florida, where you got all the big ferro people, you know, the, whether they're steel or aluminum or whatever, all the alloys were represented there. I needed to learn about vanadium. We've always produced vanadium as a, a secondary product. So I'm starting to learn the uses and, and what, what vanadium is all about. Of course, it's alloying steel primarily. Uh, the secondary use that's coming along is possibly for the, uh, the vanadium battery. But I'm going to skip over a lot. I'm going to go right to the vanadium story. Uh, we're a company that was formed uh, as a public company only in 2015. Uh, because of the vanadium story, uh, three months ago, our share price was 70 cents. Today, it's about $2.50. <laughs> and that's primarily driven by this vanadium story. Vanadium is sky high. Now, whether it stays at $30, it's one of the reasons I wanted to go to the conference to get the feel of the, the, the big companies like the new cores, the steel producers, the Russians, the Chinese, the Japanese, and of course Largo Resources is one large vanadium producer in South America if you follow that company. So I need to figure out, you know, are, are we going to sustain these prices and nobody knows for sure. Vanadium primarily has been driven by the, the Chinese. The Chinese were the biggest producer and they are the biggest consumer of vanadium. What the Chinese did, just to quickly tell you, they basically were producing a lot of vanadium from the slags of steel production. And they've ordered all those small steel mills to be shut down because they're polluting the country. So the vanadium production went away almost overnight. And that caused a shortage. Even though there's $30 plus vanadium price, you cannot buy it. Virtually nobody has it. We produce no vanadium in the United States or in North America, none at all. And of course, the Largo project in, in Brazil produces about 20 million pounds a year, all of which is now sold by Glencore. And so new production of vanadium needs to come on. Where is it going to be? You know, There's a lot of vanadium, apparently. There's some vanadium in, in, in Nevada. There's vanadium in Canada. But most vanadium is low grade as it, it occurs in the ground. The exception is a, a, a unique area of Colorado and Utah where uranium and vanadium occur in the same rock. And this area was mined first for vanadium during the First World War. They mined the vanadium for the armaments and they threw the uranium away. There wasn't any use for it. Then they started mining uranium and there was a use for the uranium. Uh, but the vanadium was always a secondary product. And the big producer in this area for years and years and years was Union Carbide. Some of you people remember Carbide was big in the mining business. They were the, probably the biggest vanadium producer in the world. They had mines in South Africa, they had mines here. Uh, very big producer. Carbide got out of the business uh, uh, of mining uh, back in the 80s. These are, the properties we have are some of the old carbide mines uh, that were mined back then and mined as recently as 2009 by a company called Denison primarily for the uranium content. There are only two companies, and Mark Chalmers is in the audience here. He's the CEO of Energy Fuels. I actually bought these properties from Energy Fuels before Mark was there. But he's the only other company that has these type of deposits that are ready to go into production. Now, there are other companies that have claims there, but they don't have developed uh, and permitted mines. Yes, yes. His, his mines also have vanadium in it. And in fact, he just had a, a press release that he's gone in. He's opened a couple of his mines to assess the very high-grade vanadium that Carbide left behind. Carbide in the, in the later stages was mining primarily for uranium. And they bypassed the very high-grade vanadium because the uranium grades didn't make the cutoff. And he has the same type of mines. So let me just keep going through here. One of the key mines that we have is called the Sunday Mine Complex. It's a complex of five mines. Now that's all about pricing. This is on our website if you want to get to it, but pricing. Uh, this, two things about the company. One, this shows the Sunday Mine. 
which is that's one of the portals of the Sunday mine. That's the one that we've announced we're going to open up and do the same thing Energy Fuels did in their mines. We're going to assess the high grade, very large vanadium resource that's less than this mine. It'll become a vanadium mine. Uh, it does have uranium in it, but for instance, as a raw ore coming out, we've got about a percent and a half vanadium. That's 30 pounds of vanadium per ton. We got five pounds of uranium. So if, let's say $30 at, at that, you've got $900 worth of vanadium and $150 worth of uranium. It's not a uranium mine right now, it's a vanadium mine. We can just throw the uranium away. Not that we will. Uh, but that's the key to this thing. Got to look. I got five minutes left. So <laughs> now to tell you how I'm going to turn this into money. We're going to open this mine. Uh, we are a company that has acquired and owned a technology that takes and upgrades uh, at the mine, takes out most of the waste and just leaves it <coughs> at the mine. This is a patented technology and this is a picture of the commercial machine. Uh, when we put this, this was designed to actually go into the mine. Uh, we'll put it into the mine and process it into the mine. It's a pretty simple process. It's patented. It was developed by some scientists in, in Casper, Wyoming. And our company acquired this oh, a couple of years ago by buying the Australian company that, that developed it. This is a picture uh, magnified a bit. The sand grains, secondary deposits of minerals coat the sand grain or in, in between the sand grains. These are secondary sandstone hosted deposits. And what this device does, it basically takes and drives these sand uh, particles against each other at a very high speed. Uh, and the collision of the sand particles releases the coating. It's kind of like sandblasting in a way, okay? So what you have then, you have a clean sand that you just simply leave at the mine and then the product, the resulting product, has to be reprocessed to turn, or continually processed to turn it into a product to sell. In this case, V205, or you could even go to the upgraded product of ferro vanadium. Interestingly enough, that's V205 that sells for about uh, $30 a pound. Ferro vanadium is quoted in kilograms probably two and a half times the value. Well, what you have to have, you have to start with V205 to get to ferro vanadium. And there's a lot of ferro vanadium plants that are shut down because they can't get V205. Uh, even at $30, it's not available. So the demand is there now. Now, does it continue? Do the Chinese turn back on? Uh, at, Nobody knows for sure, but the guy that did uh, the analysis of the vanadium market at this conference, he basically said, and he looked at the chart, and I had that chart there on the vanadium prices have gone up and down over the last 20 years, high, you know, maybe 15, down to uh, $3. He says this time is different and because two things. One, the Chinese are probably not going to allow those polluting plants to come back on, so the supply is not going to come up. The other thing the Chinese did starting 1st of November, they've ordered that most of their uh, construction has to have rebar that has vanadium in it. The things that are the number I saw, if you take a ton of steel and you put two pounds of vanadium in it, you double the strength. And what happens, they've been using poor quality uh, rebar in their buildings and they've had earthquakes and the buildings have been collapsing. So they've ordered you know, the, the, the use of rebar in their steel. So potentially that's going to increase the demand. Now the battery is a whole new technology. It's not a new technology, but a vanadium battery is as big as this room or bigger. The Chinese are using this to store massive amounts of electricity over and over and over. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, catch on fire like lithium. Uh, you can leave it set for five years and then charge it. You can charge it and discharge the same. It's amazing technology. It's not, it's not new. It's been developed years ago, but it hasn't really been put into place because we really haven't needed it. But with solar and wind energy, if we need to store that when we're not producing, it could be the vanadium battery. And that's a whole new use that could come along uh, and increase the demand for vanadium. So we've got to have more supply. So the one minute that I've got left, that's simply, you know, any company, there's a number of companies that have vanadium, but there's only two of us, and I'll mention Energy Fuels. It's a company, actually, that I founded <laughs> uh, and then bought these assets and, and set up Western. But I founded Energy Fuels. <laughs> you know, you know I, I move around the industry. I got into it a long time ago in an 80 with a company that started in the uranium business and became the largest uranium producer, uh, twice as big as anybody, publicly owned company. Mark worked for that company also. So, you know, we, we, 
called Energy Fuels Nuclear. Yeah, privately owned. Uh, had to sell the company because of the death of the majority owner for estate tax purpose. But it was an incredibly successful company. And it owned these properties, the ones Mark owns now and the ones that I own. So anyway, but we're back. I think, you know, uh, take a look at our company. Uh, I'll be happy to talk to you further about this. You can get on our website, our presentation. Uh, but we expect to hopefully be in production and turning some of this valuable vanadium into, into cash. Uh, there's a real demand for this. Of the companies I met with, they're all waiting for samples of this thing. They have plants that can produce the vanadium now. Uh, they could take it offshore and process this stuff immediately. What they do with the uranium, they would have to build a, a uranium circuit. But right now they're processing for vanadium and they cannot get the raw material. So uh, that's, the real demand is there and apparently is gonna stay for a period of time. Thank you.